Okay, welcome. Welcome to Midday, I'm sorry, to Serenity Book Club. I forgot which day it was. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you guys. And so what we want to do is start with a word of prayer. And Carolyn, would you go on and lead us with that word of prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, here we are coming boldly before your throne of grace right now, Lord, to thank you for us coming together to learn more about the power of prayer and what there is to prayer. Lord, as we read chapters 6 and 7 today, Lord, and we learn about Hannah, and we learn about uh, the other young lady as they put their faith in God and their trust in God. And we see the young veteran man as he stop and lose the race to run alongside this little child. It was that same spirit, Lord, so that we can know about the strength and the faith that there is in our belief in you and what you're going to do for us. Lord, as we just keep studying about this prayer and growing stronger in your word, Lord, teach us how we could be as uh, Pastor Elvin asked us to be those who give, even though we don't have to give, we give what we can. We run beside somebody who had the same problems or troubles that we had, Lord. So that we can help and show them the way to do it according to your will, of course. Lord, we ask and thank you, Lord, as we continue to read this book, that you can continue to pour into us more wisdom, more knowledge, more, more power for our prayer. Lord, we just thank you for rubbing your bed each and every day, Lord. She is just such a mighty woman of God who just help us to grow and become who you need us to be. We thank you, Lord, as always, for this day, for this time, and for this moment we have to learn more about you. And Lord, we pray and thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for praying. Uh, Vivian, we're so glad to see you on Facebook. I'd love to see you on here. I know that you read the book, so make sure that you give us some comments through Facebook so that we can hear what you have to say on this. Uh, we are now uh, in our next chapters of this wonderful book. Again, we are in Tony Evans' Kingdom Prayer. Uh, and I love this book because he has really been able to look at prayer from a different perspective. I love his illustrations. I think that they're very clear. And so this particular chapter that we're in, which is chapter number six, is on faith and futility. Faith and futility. And so it started out, and you kind of alluded to that in your prayer, Carolyn, uh, about the faith journey that we have when it comes to understanding God and understanding his sovereignty, even in the midst of our troubles. And so I'd love for you to go on and talk more about Heather and how that impact of that illustration came out for you. I love the way they show when, uh, as Heather was running, now she is a trained runner. She knows how to run, but Unfortunately, she slipped and fell. And not only did she fall, she hurt herself. But she knew that she couldn't stay down. And often in our life, we do the same thing. We fall. We fall more than we want to fall, but we fall. And like Heather, we need to learn to get back up regardless. Regardless of that pain, regardless of whatever, we need to trust in God, get back up, and just continue on our race as she did. And even though she fell and she started to fall behind, she won that race. And with prayer and our faith in God and us getting back up, we can run this race called life. And that is the joy in the Lord that we live. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so we have a great uh, illustration that he showed with that. I love how he tied that. Um, and he said on page 77, he said that this is exactly why we pray. That okay. example is why we pray. We know God, he is able and just assessing the able that has been known to cause us some of our own stumbles from time to time, because we're going to stumble. 
even as Christians, even as the mm. best hard caring Christians uh -huh. today, we're going to stumble sometimes. However, as for that woman who fell in the race, um, whose issues brought her to her knees, it says, because she tripped and had fallen, but the sheer pain of unanswered prayer. You know, when they said that she fell and she skidded along the roadway, even with her stomach yeah. being able to be scarred, you know, I think about sometimes we find ourselves falling and we get really scarred up but yet we can get up again because just like uh, what we feel is unanswered prayers, God can do that miracle for us. And so I, I love that part. Uh, he goes on into on page 77 to talk about Hannah's prayer oh. and the pain of an answered prayer. So I want you all to talk about, have you ever had a pain of unanswered prayer. You don't have to be specific if you don't want to share that, but have you had the pain of unanswered prayer? And so we could talk about that for just a minute, guys. And those of you who are on Facebook, if you want to join in on that, we will welcome you and we'll be happy to put in your comments as well. I I, I wanted to speak on it. I've had many uh, pains from unanswered prayer, but one in particular, um, I, I was thinking I was going to move and I had went and saw this senior housing and it, it looked good. I prayed about it. I stood in faith, but God didn't allow me to have it. And it was real painful. But uh, a friend of mine moved in. She was the one that told me about it. And they come to find out they had uh, sewage problems and smells ah. un, un, uh, choking, like unbreathable. Uh, fumes would um, come up in the apartments. But before I found that out, I was so crushed because I was just holding on and believing God for it. That's good. Uh, it's almost as though God didn't, he did answer the prayer that prayer was no for you uh, because he knew what you could handle in your respiratory system right, with everything right. that you were going through. And right. he didn't want you to go through that. You thought it was a no uh, or an unanswered prayer, but it was just a no because he had something that he wanted better for you. Right. Yeah, great. Carolyn? Did you have anything to share, Carolyn? He knew it. Okay. okay. Um, I have had, and I'm still in the prayer, <laughs> that I know Uh, I'm just trusting God in and I'm believing. I'm, I'm scared in, I'm still kind of down and scared in on it, but I believe, just as Hannah did, that it's going to be answered, that God's going to do it. I mean, there are a whole bunch of little prayer, of course, along the way that I have not had answered to it, have fallen, and God got me back up. But I have one known prayer that's been 40 some years now. It's so easy. He has not answered. And I'm okay with it. I'm still in it. And I'm going to continue to walk in it because I'm trusting God and I have that faith. I do believe that God will bring it here. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing both of you and being so vulnerable in that. Uh, Vivian, she writes, she says, sometimes we feel so sorry for ourselves. We can't even see the plan or the work that God has for our lives. Now, isn't that the truth? That's a good word, Miss Vivian. That is so true. I think because we want things the way we want it, uh, just like Hannah did. Hannah felt so badly. You know the story of Hannah. Hannah was uh, a the first wife of a husband. Those are the days in which men could have legally multiple wives. She was the preferred wife. He was, she was the one who had the heart of her husband, but she couldn't get pregnant. Now her, her counterpart, she got pregnant all the time. And because in those days, sons had a much better value 
than, you know, daughters did. She gave him lots of sons. And so she kind of teased Hannah a long oh, yeah. way for not giving him sons. And that in those days were really a horrible thing to not be able to bear a child. It was a shame, it was as though you were accursed uh, because you didn't have children. And so what you found here is that in uh, the 13th chapter of Proverbs, verse 12, on page 77, um, he deferred makes the heart sick. He deferred makes the heart, I'm sorry, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And whenever you have hope that's deferred, something that you're hoping for, your heart gets sick about it. It gets uh, to be overwhelming. And because she thinks that, or she thought at the time that she wasn't blessed because of it, it made it very difficult for her at that time to just understand what God was doing at the moment. Hannah had no children, according to 1 Samuel 1 and 2. She had no children to be able to represent her and she was in a desperate situation. I don't know if you've ever been in a desperate situation in prayer. It's not like a desire prayer, but a desperate situation in prayer is like, um, they're about to, the sheriff is coming tomorrow. Uh, in fact, more desperate than that, the sheriff is coming in an hour and I don't have any place to go. I mean, that's kind of the desperation that, um, that we're talking about here. I loved it on page 78 because he says, many of the problems, emptiness, barrenness like uh, Hannah was experiencing or complications that we face in our lives aren't as tied to our physical realm as they appear. What did you all think about that as he goes on to explain about overcoming and achieving? You can unmute your mic. Anyone? Can you repeat the question again, please? Uh, the question was, he says in, on page 78, he says, uh, similarly, he was talking about Hannah's situation. Many of our problems, emptiness, barrenness, this is on page 78. Uh, many of our problems, emptiness, barrenness, or complications that we face in our lives are, are, aren't as tied to the physical realm as they appear. In other words, many a times these are spiritual things that we don't understand. And I'm asking the question based upon that, uh, do you, what do you believe about that statement? What do you believe about how this prayer, the emptiness, the areas that we feel just broken about, uh, that it's not a physical thing, but it's a spiritual thing? Hmm. Well, think about that. We'll come back to that, guys, if, okay. you, if you don't have any thoughts on that. Let's move on to the tears mm -hmm. of her prayer. Uh, you'll see that the tears of her prayer, um, she began to cry. I mean, in fact, uh, the Bible says that Eli was so concerned, he thought that she was drunk because she was just weeping so much. I don't know if you've ever been so discouraged in your heart that you just like wail, you know, and, and you just feel unconsolable. <laughs> and even though he had said to Hannah that you are much better to me than, you know, hundreds of sons, it still mm -hmm. wasn't beneficial for her because she didn't want to be a barren woman. The reputation of that uh, was too devastating for her and she wanted to have a son. But the tears that she began to cry was, you know, just that outward expression of what we feel. I think sometimes we've been taught in our lives to stuff in 
our fears and our tears and don't let anybody know that you're dealing with these things, you know, just go on and, you know, suck it up or whatever, buck up, you know, be a man, be a woman and, and not feel that. But what it said here in the middle of um, 79 on that lower paragraphs, it says, sometimes it's okay to cry. It's okay to reach the point where you admit that you cannot go on any further apart from God's intervening hand. Life is hard. Hannah had had to move more, sorry, Hannah had more than she could handle. And the scripture says in verse 10 of that chapter that she wept bitterly. Bitter weeping is something else. It is uh, an amazing point of, of just development before God to say, God, I am so hurt. My heart is so sick. My heart can't take it anymore. And sometimes we'll find ourselves, even the best of Christians, bitterly weeping. What are your thoughts on that? Anybody? Um, can I get thought on the other one also? Sure. Yeah. And welcome, Aprella. Uh, hello. Hey, Aprella. <laughs> hey, everybody. I hello. truly believe that our uh, problems are more spiritual than physical. We feel it physically, but they are spiritual problems. But one thing is that we have a plan for our life. It's not God's plan. Mm -hmm. So when we do things and take them into our hand, of course, we're going to feel it physically because Spiritually, God is working something else out in us and through us. And with uh, Hannah crying bitterly, I think sometimes we have to. The life gets so hard on us and we don't see the end. And at that moment, I don't think we have our full trust and faith in God that he has a plan for this end. How can he get us through this situation? As you were saying, the chef is coming in an hour or so. What can God do now? We somehow lose that faith that we have in God to really believe that he could show up and show out and do better than what we could ever think he could do. So yeah. with both of them, I disagree with him. Okay. Uh, Vivian says, she says that God can use our hurts, disappointments, fears and problems to encourage and strengthen someone else as they see us overcome. I'm telling you, that's good. It that is, is true. true. It is that. true. Uh, because of Hannah today, we as Bible readers can see what it's like to be desperate and weepy before God and how God can move. So yes, I agree with you, Ms. Vivian. Um, I want us to move on to the motive of a prayer. We're on page 80 of our book and welcome Liz. We're glad to see you, Reverend Liz. Um, it basically, he has a caption on the bottom of page 80. And it says, if you want your prayers answered, consider how that answer will benefit God and his kingdom. Yeah. Because isn't that what happened with Hannah? Once Hannah received the child that God had given to her because she desperately cried out to him in prayer, she wound up giving that child to, yeah, to serve. And then what God did was replenish her by giving her other sons after that. And I wonder, do we really think about that when we offer prayers to God? How does this benefit God? And how does this benefit the kingdom? And anybody can jump in and just share at that point, anybody. Reverend Yvette, I was going to say, when I read this, I never thought about that. And I was like, are my prayers being selfish? You know, it's more about me, 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 and not 
what is God's will for me? Uh, uh, how would this benefit God if this prayer is answered? So that, that made me really ponder on that. Okay, thank you so much, Estella. Anybody else that wanna share? I agree with it. I agree with Estella. It made me also think, and I wonder as I go through this long draw I'm in right now, is it because I have been selfish about my prayer? So as with Miss uh, Stella, I decided that I need to focus on more how this is going to glorify God than more than what it's going to do for me. So I agree with it. Okay. Anyone else? Um, I didn't. I didn't read it yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yay! Been, Wrong page. Yeah, they've been having meetings at this time, so I haven't been able to join you guys. But anyway, just thinking back, uh, I do know the story about Hannah, and you know her her prayer was like, God, if you do this, I'll give you this. And a lot of times, we really don't um, think about that. I think sometimes we think if we say, God. Um, I don't know if we trust him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we, you know, I think sometimes is we don't trust him to to replenish or restore what we're giving back to him. Uh huh. I don't know. So sometimes I just don't think we trust him. Mm hmm to really give it to him and say here God you know we want him to get the glory I mean we say we do but then you know I don't know this is just a thought yeah I think uh, I think you're right uh Aprella, I think that that's the prayer every time people stand in the lottery lines for the big jackpot and say to God okay God <laughs> <laughs> if you give me the winning number, I'm going to pay off the House of Hope. I'm going to pay off this ministry. Everybody who stands in need, God, you will get the glory out of that. Yeah. Okay. I know what you're saying. <laughs> I think they get scared. I don't know. I mean, it's like, you know, God is sovereign. He's going to do what he's going to do when he's going to do it, how he's going to do it. We know that. Okay. Um, we can bank on that because of his sovereignty and but the thing of it is we always want to be in a no i know i do and you know and it's like do i make this commitment you know so we kind of teeter on the fence and it's like oh okay yeah okay uh-huh because we're thinking about the impact that it's going to have on us mm -hmm. and, and sometimes we don't like that outcome but we got to trust God enough to say, okay, God, you know, here it is. You're going to do what you're going to do. And I'm going to trust you. And he never, and you know, he never, he's not, he's not trying to hurt us or anything, but it's something in our minds. I mean, maybe because people, man has hurt us. We've been through so much. And a lot of times I think we, and I, and again, I'm just thinking through this. We, um, we put God in that place of man and forget that he is, God and he loves us and it's not his desire to hurt us but to build us up to love us to do all those things he that's not his goal his goal but we just we put him we bring him down instead of just keeping him where he is I think that's what it is so then when we pray I can say that for myself you know it's like oh okay you know, and then we, we don't see it. <clears throat> we have this expectation that's going to turn out. I don't know what we're thinking. God, you know, we, we have a we have an expected view of what it's going to be. But when he does it, he does it so much more. So I don't know. That's just my thought. I'm done. <laughs> oh, no, no. I understand. No, I appreciate that. I think you're right on so many levels. Uh, he talks about the motive of why we pray, what prayers that we pray. And so what is our motivation behind it? Sometimes uh, it goes back to the scripture where it says that sometimes we ask amiss because our motives are wrong. And so on page 81, 
he goes on and says that we should probably ask ourselves these, these questions regarding our prayers. He said, first, is what I'm praying for going to benefit others? Uh, so if it is in a health situation where I am asking God to restore my health, am I asking God to restore my health just for me or so that I can be around to help other people? Am I asking God to bless me with money so that I can just have more things for me? Or am I trying to do that so that I can benefit others? The second question he asks or that he suggests that we ask ourselves is, does my request, if granted, bring glory to God? How is the prayer that I'm praying at that point going to bring glory to God? Am I going to have a testimony that I'm willing to share? You know, uh, is it going to be something that he will be honored by? How will he bring glory to God? These are just his suggestions in terms of asking uh, these questions. The third one he says is, how will this request advance God's kingdom agenda on the earth? Am I lining up with kingdom principles? Because remember, this is what this book is about, it is about kingdom, right? And so I'm at asking ourselves, does this advance, this request, advance God's kingdom agenda on the earth? Will it allow evangelism to go forth? Will it allow for the love of God to be shown? Will it show his miracle working power? How will it advance the kingdom? And then lastly, will the answer to my prayer equip me to serve God more fully? You know, so if I'm asking God for a new sports vehicle with the top down and I go uh, riding all the time and I never take any time for the kingdom, was that a request that was answered that brought glory to God. You know, I guess unless I have a big sign in the back of my top saying, Jesus is Lord. I don't know. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, guys? What are you all thinking? No uh, thoughts? Our prayer should. Okay. Uh, okay. All his questions are right on point. Because all our prayers should glorify God and it should be to benefit others and to do things for others. I know it's even since I've been reading the book, a couple of young ladies who I helped mentor, one was really going through it with her marriage and she often calls. And I was able to get from this book as we read it. I mean, the things that I have remembered and whatnot. And I started pouring into her some of the things that she had to do and what God looking forward to doing, what he, you looking for this happiness for yourself, but are you going to take whatever God using with you now and be able to go and do a ministry, a marriage ministry for other couple who's going through the same thing to help them to go through it? Or will you be able to take it somehow to bless other people with it? So I agree, whatever we do should be for to give God the glory, to give God the honor and the praise. Thank you so much for sharing. That next line right underneath these questions, I thought this was vital for us to look at. He says, these are the types of questions to run your prayer needs through to, and this is the key, to align your heart's motivation with God's will. Your heart's motivation with God's will. That's, you know, when we look at that scripture, when he says that he'll give you the desires of your heart, how is that heart motivation aligning with the will of God? Or is it just that I want what I want? I mean, it's okay to want what we want. I mean, really, honestly, it is. And because we are human, we want what we want. But what this does is helps us to think through these prayer requests and to say, how does this help me to align my prayers with your will, God? 
And that's why even the challenge uh, of affixing your need or concern or fear to a prayer, to a scripture, is really helpful because you allow yourself to align yourself with the will of God. And so uh, any thoughts about this before we move on a little further? Reverend Yvette, I was going to say um, just by um, looking at um, Hannah's example, she prayed for a child. She wanted a child. God gave her a child. And she was, to me, she had great faith that she made a promise to God and she took the child back. Now, sometimes with myself, sometimes God gives me what I want, but sometimes I don't keep my promises to him, you know, like I should. And uh, that was a great uh, example. And also I have to go back with my prayers for myself. Now I'll pray for others and intercede for others. And I know that lines up with the word of God, but the prayers that I pray for myself, I'm not so sure. So that's making me rethink, how am I praying? How are my prayers? Are they selfish prayers? Or are, are they aligning with the word of God? I think you had a great point in that, Miss Estella. I think that that was the point that the scripture shows for Hannah as well. The fact that she did honor her promise to God, she was able to be uh, re, um, not, not her child wasn't given back to her, but God was able to give her restoration or reparations for that in the sense of allowing her to have more children, you know, to satisfy her as well. So you're right. I think we have to be very clear that if we say to God something, um, you know, if you do this, I will do this for you, or I will give this to you, or I will do this for you, God, uh, that we actually do it. Because then we can actually clog up our blessing flow uh, by our disobedience. So that's a great point of vulnerability. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? And can I share one more thing? Absolutely. Now, Hannah did this in great faith to me towards God because she didn't know God was going to bless her with any more children. That's and that, that stood out to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And that's a great observation. It's so true. Anyone else want to share before we move on to page 84? I just want to say uh, 1 John is clear too. 1 John 5, 14, 15, it tells us um, about now, I know this prayer, knowing by heart, now I can't think of it. If you ask anything according to his will, he hears us, and we have the petitions thereof. So he's telling us right there in the New Testament in 1 John, I'm sorry, in 1 John, that if we ask according to his will, so it, so our ask has to be lining up with, with what God wants. So, and a lot of times we don't think about that. And then, and then back to, I mean, I think you taught, taught it and Michelle taught it. And if you go back to Matthew 6, seek ye first. You, you know, he says, delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. So I think all of these point to the fact that the ask has to be lined up with his will. Okay, whatever it is. Um, and that's the thing I think. And you're right. He, you know, it's okay to want what you want because we're human, and God does give us our desires. But you have to really say, "Hey, God, does this line up with your will?" You know, and that's yeah. what I have to say. That's good. Thank you so much for sharing. Anything else before we move on? On page eighty-four. Um, I, I loved how he identifies this. You see it in the scripture, but his writing just makes it so much plain, I think. He says, Hannah gives up her plans for his. He says, Hannah did not sit around and wait for God to send a stork with her special package. Rather, she acted on the truth that God was going to give her a son and then he did, she fulfilled her vow to give him back to him. 
And then you see that in verses 23 through 28 of that first Samuel passage. But the second lesson he says at the bottom of page 84, we learn from Hannah is that she kept her promises and gave up her own plans for God's. That was powerful to me. What were the thoughts that came across you as you read this level? And Ms. Vivian, you can chime in too, if you'd like from Facebook. To give up our plans for God's plans, that is like the, I don't know, the top of motivation or sacrifice to say, God, as Jesus did in the garden, as he said, not my will, but thine be done. Are we really honestly willing to give up some of our plans for God's plan? Now, remember, she had a plan. She offered God her plan. She talked to him about the plan. God offered a different plan and she submitted to that plan. How willing are we to submit to the plan of God rather than our own plan? And if you're not comfortable with talking about that, we'll move on to page 85. I'll just give you guys a second. Miss... Okay, go on. Sorry. For me, oh no, go ahead, Miss Vivian. No, 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 go on, please. For me, uh, my plans has to be God's plans. I know that I didn't make it this far without through me, because uh, I know I'm a rest and uh, I'm not ashamed to say it before anybody. I know that God has had great kindness and mercy toward me. So for me, I'm willing to give up whatever it is that I have to give up to follow God's plan. And uh, I just don't see, there's no reason why I have lost so many aunts and cousins and friends I know from cancer. But yet, this is my 23rd year of being cancer free. There's no reason. That's only Praise God. because of God. My by his grace it hasn't come back or anything which nobody thought would be my doctor even told me that i didn't do some treatment he said that i wouldn't be here for a couple of years so if i don't give up what i believe for god i won't be here you would not have me sitting here with you and, and conversation it's gone <laughs> that's an amazing testimony that's an amazing testimony Many people cannot say that. And you gave up your plan for God's plan, even though you had to go through a lot of things, you know, probably with chemo or radiation or whatever it is that you had to go through. And you didn't know that you would go through, but God brought you through. And what an amazing change of plans. And so we had you here uh, so that we could be blessed. Yes. <laughs> Amen. So that, let me just say this, because even when I... Uh, they told me I had it. That's all I heard. I don't know what else that doctor said too much, but I have it. And I heard God tell me, you're going to be okay. But uh, for me, I, whew, as you say, I went through it and I did. And I'm willing to go through whatever it is that he has me to go through. I don't want to go through what you have me to go through or, or, or it still has me to go through. Anybody else has that. But if God says go through it, I will. Because I went through some stuff. I had planned on working until I was about 25 or 80. But it wasn't God planned. He put he made me bedridden at that time. Yeah. I can do it myself. I can do anything for myself. But through his, he brought me through that. And so there's no way I won't give my life back for what he has done for me. I have seen my grandkids, my kids, you know, everything just keep going for me. So I can continue to give him. That's why I love to teach the children so they can know. But I'm sorry, I'm running on and on. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Miss Vivian from Facebook says, we want God to do whatever we ask, 
but he would understand when we change what we promise saying God knows my heart. Yeah, I, I, I think so. You know, we do want what we want and we do say God knows my heart, uh, but his plans are much better because he can see the whole plan. It's almost like when um, a war is in process and a general comes up with a strategy, usually that general has an idea as to where the enemy is currently stationed, uh, has an idea of what has worked in the past, understands how many people need to be in certain places because they see the big picture. But when it is given to the sergeant to give to their people, they only see the peace in which they're in at the time. It's like if you've ever been on a highway and all of a sudden, you know, traffic just halts. You can't see necessarily what's going on. Maybe Waze hasn't told you yet what the accident is ahead. Maybe you don't know because there's no signage up there to say what's going on, but clearly someone sees what's ahead of us. And oftentimes we don't know what's ahead of us. We assume what's ahead of us. We think we know the plan, but God knows a much bigger plan than we could ever know. And so in that we have to give up our own plans for his plans. Anybody else before we move on? All right, well, let's move on to page 85. Powerful prayers are giving prayers is how he starts it. And then he uses Luke 6, 38. He says that's a powerful verse because we often neglect to understand completely. It directly applies to the fruitfulness and the power of our prayers. Give and it shall be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. By the standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. And he says, notice the word it in the verse. Give and it, whatever it is, will be given to us. And then skipping down the page, on page 86, it says, do you need answered prayer? Then seek to be the answer to someone else's prayer. What was your thoughts on that? He goes on on page 87 to say, when you, uh, when you can no longer endure, surrender. He says, if you're struggling right now in a situation that you feel that you cannot endure much, young, much longer, take heart, allow yourself to go low, even to the point of weeping bitterly like Hannah, because that is the point that you will find freedom to trust God fully. It is at that point that you will find powerful tool called surrender. And then he identifies that. He says that surrender uh, is the secret to, ans to answer the prayer. It is, has opened up more doors and even wounds than you even realize. Surrender is letting go of your timing, your will, and even your intended purpose and trusting God in his. It is the essence of alignment. It is the DNA of faith, and it is also the power found in kingdom prayer. What were your thoughts on that as you read it? And hi, Lorraine, we're welcoming you guys to Serenity Book Club. I think you do have to surrender. You have to surrender your will totally and completely to God in order to 
read what he has for you. Uh, surrendering is when you know that you can't do, he was saying that when you're struggling in a situation, you help somebody else to do something also. So my life, I remember before this all broke out, there was a lady, I don't know why God had me see her and watch her, but she had about six or seven back and she was walking. I don't know if you know Whole Food over here on 95th. She was walking from Whole Food over to the oldies, which is not a short walk with all those bags. And I watched her. And luckily, I was, I, I, thankfully, I was going to Aldi. So I saw her in Aldi, still buying more stuff. And so I saw her come out. We came out about the same time. And she had all these bags and everything. And she, and she wasn't in the best of shape. So I, I got in my car. Gregory and I, I said, I can't, I can't leave her like that. I surrendered whatever I had and whatever I had to do. And I said, I got to take her home. I didn't know her, never seen her before. So I rolled my window down. Ma'am, I know you don't know who I am from nobody else. I said, but I promise you, I just want to take you home. If you allow me, please, let me just take you and your grocery home. I was hoping she was in the community. <laughs> She lived in London townhouse. <laughs> oh my, okay. So we had a good talk and everything. So it, it was a blessing just for God to allow me to do that. And I surrender what we had to do for the rest of that day. And whatever my plan was to do something that God know that I should do. I just, I, I just saw that. And I just believe that that was surrendering from what we thought we needed to do that day. Cause we, none of that was necessary. But that lady was struggling. She had to catch, she said, I think three bus to get to London Townhouse with all of those bags. And there was no way I could just, you know, see it and do it without surrendering our day and our life to do that for her, for God. And surrender is a hard pill to swallow sometimes because it says, all of you, Lord, and of you. less of me. All of you, Lord, and none of me. <laughs> You know, it it, it uh, requires something of you, but he was saying that in his in his um, in his argument is that once you actually learn to surrender, once you learn to surrender yourself and do benefits for others and surrender your even your thoughts, your agenda, your objectives to God, then you have answered prayer. Because now we line up with his alignment and not our own. And before we move to the next chapter, because we're going to have to wrap this up very shortly, uh, are there any other responses that you want to share that you think are significant for this surrender? I don't want anybody to go unaddressed. I, I, I'm going to be quick. I just want to say certain areas in my life, I'm, I'm not able to surrender. Uh, it might be small to some, but like my eating uh, certain things, because I know my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and I should be healthy. So I can do the work of the kingdom. But for some reason, I can't low, let go of sugar and the bread and all the junk food. But I'm, I'm learning after reading this. that There's a surrender that happens in everything and everybody. I believe that all of us has something. It, I, it may be outward, it might be inward. It might be emotional, it might be physical. It might be mental, it might be spiritual. We all have something that we need to surrender. You know, the, how does the hymn go? All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. I will ever uh, love and trust him uh, in his presence daily live. I surrender all. It's a surrender that really does help answer our prayers. And we realize that we're struggling <laughs> trying to get our prayers answered, not surrendering. God says, I will give you answered prayer, but I need you to surrender the way that you're going to do it. You know, instead of saying, God, you know, uh, instead of saying, God, I'm stuck on this one house that I put a bid for, you know, because you know I need to move. Instead, 
surrendering to his will would say, yeah, I know you don't want me to have this house. I don't understand that, but you've given me a house. Thank you, God. Surrendering does still answer our prayers. It just doesn't answer it in the same way that we had hoped for it to be answered. I don't want us to rush through two or three together, which is chapter seven. So we'll start that next week. But I want us to finish just talking about this surrendering. Uh, we can just finish that up today. What do you all have to say about surrender? Because once again, when you look at this statement that he just made, it seems controversial. Let me read it again. Surrender, and this is on page 87, is the secret to answered prayer. It has opened more doors, and even wounds than we even realize. Surrender is letting go of your timing, your will, and even your intended purpose and trusting God in his. I think that's sometimes difficult. Am I by myself? No. Oh, you're not. <laughs> You know, um, it makes me think back a year ago, and I, I voiced some of these concerns to you, that personally, when I had to surrender some things of my own, and I really didn't want to give it up, my house, my everything, and it was really hard. It was unexpected, but I did it to help out family. It cost me a pretty penny, um, and I really struggled. I just like, oh, God, it was so hard. It's still hard, but when I look back a year, so now I'm a year forward, and it was worth it in so many different ways, um, and whatever I lost financially, I regained plus some, um, and Everybody was blessed. Prayers were answered. Things turned around so tremendously beyond what I could even imagine. And that was God. And then he was working with me. He was showing me because I was like, oh, do we have to do this again? But, um, and I could have said no, but then what would have happened? You know, that could have went a different way. And I'm glad that even though it was tough, and difficult uh, for me. Um, I was able to be a blessing to my family as well as myself. And God did it. He turned it around. And I'm I'm and, and I'm and I'm good. And they're in a good place. And I'm in a good place. And it's good. But I had to surrender some stuff. I had to give up some stuff. And I really didn't want to. And I go back one page. I saw when Hannah on page 85 mm -hmm. says at the top, God didn't respond to Hannah until she made her vow to give back the very thing that she wanted most. Yeah. She wasn't willing to give up until she reached her desperate situation. So she got desperate. She had to surrender. So that's what that says to me. I just saw that early, uh, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. It's tough. It's hard. It is hard. It but is God hard. does respond and and he does and in and, and, and doing so, you don't even realize you. I mean, and we say this all the time, but it's true. He is blessing you in that situation. You may not see it come to fruition right then, but he does. And I'm a witness. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. Well, we are almost at our bewitching hours, so we're going to stop right here. We will start back next week in chapter seven that we would have covered today because I really don't want us to skip through that very quickly. Also, when you uh, are reading for next week, make sure that you reread uh, chapter seven. Go on and read chapter eight, and hopefully we'll also get to chapter nine. 
which I love that as well. So if we'll just get started next week, we'll do seven, eight, and nine. Uh, we'll do as much as we can get through because this is really something that you just can't rush through. You got to digest this. This is a great, great book. Uh, it has been a blessing for us to read it and to understand it. Tony Evans' book on kingdom prayer. And oftentimes we find ourselves lacking in prayer because we don't do it the kingdom way. So I'm excited. Thank you guys for joining us in Serenity Book Club today. Thank you for your comments, both on Facebook as well. And I'm so grateful for all of you. Uh, Aprella, would you just end us with a word of prayer? Father, you're faithful and you're true, God. And we just thank you, God, for uh, this Serenity Book Club, for Reverend Yvette, for these ladies, oh God, as we continue in this theme of prayer, God. Father God, help us, oh God, to learn, Lord, that we do need to surrender, God, and that our prayers need to, uh, our, our wants and our desires should line up with those things that uh, you have, Lord. Lord, that it will glorify you. Let us answer those questions through those filters that you provided. Will it bring glory to you, God? Have I surrendered? Am I being selfish? Is this what you have for me? Help us, God, to just know, God, that um, you do hear our prayers, oh God, and that, Lord, when we really surrender to you, God, you do answer our prayer, God. Lord, we love you, we honor you, we praise you, we thank you for this book, uh, Kingdom Prayer by Tony Evans, and we thank you for every lady that's listening or anybody who's listening on these, uh, these, uh, this book club. You get the glory in Jesus' name, amen. 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 And Lorraine, yes, we are praying for you as well. We know that God is a God who can be trusted and yeah. we have to surrender everything to him. So thank you guys for joining us this week. We'll see you on next week. Have a great day, Facebook.